The brain is a very emotive organ. For some people, it contains all of their memories. For some people, when we die, the, the body is nothing but a shell. Everybody wants to, to hear about the brain bank. People are always fascinated. Um, I think a lot of people don't actually realise that facilities like this exist. My name's Laura Palmer and I'm the manager of the Southwest Dementia Brain Bank based in Bristol. I've been working here for the last 11 years. While I was at university, my grandmother had a stroke and developed dementia. So I decided to do some investigation and learnt a bit more about it and, and how many people it affects and what an important disease it is. And then I had the opportunity after university to apply for this job at the Brain Bank. I decided that I really wanted to make a difference in dementia research and that's how I came to be here. I think that public awareness of brain donation has increased dramatically in the time that I've worked here and in a very positive way. We're taking more and more donations year on year. We accept brain donations from anybody with a diagnosis of dementia at any age and we also register people without memory problems and without a, a dementia diagnosis from age 55 onwards. Um, that enables us to compare the tissue without disease to the disease tissue. So in order to register as a potential donor, uh, people will contact us here at the bank. We check their age and that we're able to uh, register them in our geographical region. We then will send the person out our participant information sheets and consent forms in the post. If they decide that they'd like to go ahead and register, they just complete the consent forms and return them to us in the post. Once they have registered and we receive that information back, we will write to their GP to let them know. And that just sits on record, we, we hope, for, for many years. When we're informed of a donor's death, we have 72 hours in which to coordinate the donation receive it back here and process that tissue. I am very much involved with the coordination of brain donations, so that can be liaising with the family at the time of a donor's death. Uh, that may involve the funeral director, their GP, the coroner, mortuary staff. It's a whole lot of organisation that we need to achieve as quickly as possible. I've huge respect and admiration for people that decide to donate their brain. It's not an easy decision to make. It involves their families supporting their decisions. And each and every donation is, I think, unique and different in its own way. A different family, a different story, different circumstances. One of the important things that we always let our donors know is that one brain donation can be involved in hundreds and hundreds of tissue requests over the time that the tissue is stored here. We've supported tissue requests from Canada, Sweden, Australia. The majority of our requests do come from the United Kingdom, but we think it's particularly important to support the best research wherever that is. Our bank's been in existence for 31 years now. A couple of weeks ago, we received our thousandth brain donation, which I think was a massive milestone for, for our bank and for dementia research. I had the great honour of being asked to write something to be read at our donor's funeral, and it really struck me when I was writing it just how important every donation has been. And it was really special to me to find out just how important brain donation was to the gentleman who was our thousandth donor. I feel very closely attached to the brain bank. I think we've, we've both grown together over my time here. Where I'd like to be is, is still here dealing with these wonderful people, um, making a difference in my own small way and hopefully seeing the bank go from success to success year on year.